All right, guys, today we're starting the series on the 1985 300 SD. This is a really beautiful car. Uh, you guys saw the video of me meeting the original owner and picking up the car. And the paint is the pearl black, or I'm sorry, black pearl metallic with that burgundy interior, and it's fantastic. Really killer color combo. So we're going to start the restoration slash refurbishing process today. Um, I'll probably start with the fuel sending unit. Uh, the gauge is a little wonky, so I need to clean that. Uh, and I'm going to change the thermostat. And we're going to check out the air cleaner uh, housing bushings. Um, that'll be just those simple items to start with. And then we'll get this thing up in the air and start going through the suspension. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do on this 85 is remove the fuel sending unit and clean that. Now, <clears throat> on the 85 SD models, um, 300 SD models, I think they're actually behind the back seat. Now, we have to remove the back seat anyway because we're replacing the shocks, replacing the shocks all four corners. So this really kills two birds with one stone. But uh, to remove the seat, there's actually little clips right down here under the seat or like it's, it's a little lever you pull the lever and it detaches the front of the seat and we're going to do that on both sides there we go and that seat is disconnected now pretty ingenious design they did that on a lot of cars but what we can do is flip that seat forward and then we can get access there is a screw um, over here in the center and over there and we're going to detach this seat back and it'll lift up there's a track in the back it'll lift off of and come forward there it goes all right now the seat just slides forward so once you get the seat loose you can just swing that forward. You don't have to take everything out. There's room to do this without removing everything. And you take the insulation off a little clip there. There's an insulation clip. There's the brackets that that seat was mounted on. It clips in behind the bracket. And then you pull this back and there we go. Here, is the plug for the fuel sending unit and here are the plugs for the shocks all right so to get to the fuel sending unit we'll pop out the one on the top and there we go there's the fuel sending unit this is what you got to clean on these cars and there we go we just unplug it and then to get it out To get it out, I ordered this from our buddy Kent over at Mercedes Source. Great little tool. Just pop this guy right down on there and put, I think it's a 17 millimeter, and you turn that out. So we'll do that in a minute. To access the shocks, you pop out this cover plate. There we go. Set that one up there. And there is the top of the original shocks get a wrench around there and a socket, you have to have a wrench that you've shaved down. When you shave them down, see they fit around like that and it doesn't interfere with the top bolt. There you go, easy as that. And you can spin this guy right out. Now, it's full of diesel, so you need to have a container to catch it and guys the first thing I noticed this fuel sending unit actually has come apart from the uh, body from the housing and <laughs> and it's down in the tank so I'm gonna have to get that out of the tank all right so I was able to just take a coat hanger and shape it up uh, into, you know, use the hook end of it and reach down in the fuel tank and, and get the housing uh, for the fuel sender out of there. Um, looks normal. This is what they always look like, you know, kind of black at one end and 
that's where the diesel it's been down in the diesel and that's near the uh, the top but this is the internal component of the fuel sender and you can see all the little wires are broken on this one so we're gonna go ahead and get a replacement and uh, install it back into the car all right we've got a new sending unit on order and while that's on its way I'm just going ahead and uh, I'm going to start on the rear shocks. We're going to remove the shock mount here at the inside the car. And then underneath the car, there's two bolts that actually hold the shock in. So we'll go ahead and do that next. These wheels off of here. All right, let's see what these brakes look like. Oh wow, those rotors are new. That's great. Previous owner had put some new rotors on here. Fantastic. A lot of life left in them, so let's check these brake pads out. Yeah, those are new brake pads too. Look how thick those things are. See the brake pad right there. Wow. All right, it's already got new pads and rotors on there. No grooves or scoring. So that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and get it up. We're gonna go through the suspension and then we'll get back there and take out those rear shocks we were just working on. All right, while we got the back wheels off, these rotors back here are new also. So it's obvious the previous owner uh, had the rotors replaced. The pads, in the back are these are brand new pads so this car does not need pads and rotors they're in outstanding condition let's get underneath here and check out and get these shocks out of here all right first thing you want to notice about this car is the previous owner had brand new axles installed it's rare that you see someone go to this extent in maintenance, but that's fantastic. These are brand new axles. Still has the Mercedes uh, barcode sticker on them. So to get these rear shocks out, you can see that's an old original shock. Let's get that out of here. It's just two bolts here on the bottom on both sides. So let's get those out now. easy as that we already disconnected it up at the top and this will just pull right through here and uh, yeah that's definitely a crusty old original shock so let's let's get some new shocks in here there's our nasty old original shock they were still functioning, but we want to uh, we want to put some new ones in there, so they'll go another hundred thousand miles. All right, here we are at the front of the car. I can see this ball joint. I can see that boot is ripped, so we're going to go ahead and pop all this uh, off. And I want to go ahead and change the tie rods and the center link. And the center link. Yep. See how loose that tie rod is? Let's go ahead and get that out. Brake control rod bushing. That boot's is still intact in good shape. Let's check the other side. Oh, yeah. See, that brake control rod bushing boot is ripped. So we're going to go ahead and put some new control rod bushings in there. And also, we're going to replace this uh, steering shock because when we have all this out, uh, you might as well go ahead and replace this and it looks very clean up in here. No leaking from the transmission Super clean over here Very very clean under here All right, just removing all these tie rods
So we have the tie rods broken loose on the uh, steering arm here. So now we'll raise it up and we'll break them loose from the inside. I always stick this little metal spacer in here so it makes it uh, where I get better leverage. That's kind of dangerous guys so I always actually wear a face shield that way it doesn't when that goes flying off of there it doesn't come back and whack me right in the face so anyway those are the uh tie rods on both sides now we're going to go in here and take this center link off because we're changing all this out putting fresh mercedes parts on there So we have to also break that one loose. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and loosen the uh, steering, the shock. This is, I call it the steering shock. I guess this uh, dampens the steering vibrations a little bit. We're going to replace that. Whoop. There we go. And we will reuse that nice original grade eight cadmium plated Mercedes bolt. That is in good condition. There we go. And then we'll disconnect it from the other side right there. So we'll take out that steering shock. And then we're going to put the bolt back in there so we don't lose it. Now we need to break this loose. Man, that one was in there. Here's the center link. It's only connected by that one part now. All right, guys, so those are your, your main steering components. Tie rods, center link, steering shock. So we got that old 35, 36 year old parts out of here. Next thing we wanna do is we're going to remove the grease cap and disconnect the rotor, I'm sorry, the caliper. That's two bolts right back here. And then we're going to pop off uh, the bearings, the rotor, and the caliper so we can access the rest of the suspension. All right, put our bolts over here. And now we want to take our caliper off and hang it by the sway bar up there to keep it out of the way. Use this little one. That's how we get the caliper off. Put a little pry bar on there. And I think I need to lower the car a little bit so I can actually reach the sway bar. All right, we get our caliper off there. And we put some wire through the hole there. And then to keep anything from stressing, Pop this guy back up here. <clears throat> there we go. That guy is not going anywhere. And now we have a and now we have a spindle that we can work with 
So we'll pop off that dust cover and we'll get this rotor off. There we go. And there is the um, spindle nut. It holds the, the bearings and the hub assembly onto the uh, controller or, or the, the main, I guess we'll call that the steering knuckle. So we're going to take this off with an Allen key and unscrew this nut and then remove the rotor. Little five mil, or number five metric. You just loosen a little bit and then you can turn this nut off. And this nut, you can't put a, a wrench on there. It is made to be tightened by hand because you don't want these over tightened. You just want to snug these up and get the play uh, out of the bearings when you're reassembling everything. So we're gonna put some fresh bearings in here and we, of course, have to remove this to get to the uh, rest of the suspension, which we're going to disassemble. <clears throat> and there we go. So now we want to take our dust shield off here. And that's also 5 millimeter. <laughs> Break those loose. And right here, you can see this is the ABS sensor. And that comes out, you can remove it. Let me zoom in there for you. So we're gonna remove that from the back side and clean it often, uh, cause if you don't, those will often make the ABS uh, warning light on the dash flicker. So we're gonna clean those. All right, and on the 85 model, there's actually uh, a nut right here. You got to take that nut off um, to remove the dust shield because there, behind there, it is holding a little mounting bracket tube where the ABS sensor goes through. So we'll go ahead and take that nut off there now. All right, that's our dust shield. And there's that little nut that was on the back that was holding that tube. You can see the tube right there. So now we have access to remove this steering knuckle and get the ball joint off. Here's the ball joint. We wanna replace the ball joints. We can also unbolt the shock and get the shock out of here. And now these upper control arms, they actually look really good. I'm going to have to take a look at them. I don't know if these actually need to be replaced because the bushings look outstanding. Of course, we are going to change the, uh, the ball joints down here, though. So let's go ahead and get start, started on that. And we're also going to need to compress and remove the spring uh, to do all that. There's the front end components we've removed. Rotors, dust shields, tie rods, center link, and steering shock. Now we're going to lower the vehicle back down and undo the shocks from the top. Okay, here we are at the top of the car. And right here you can see, same as on the back of the car, those two nuts we have to break loose to get the shocks uh, out from underneath. Also, while I'm up here, I like to look at all the rubber vacuum line connections. And you can clearly see that these are all in outstanding condition. There's no need to replace the rubber vacuum line con connections. Yeah, these are all top-notch condition. Now, what we do have is the air cleaner mount. See how that air cleaner is loose? And we have to remove this so we can easily uh, get the springs out on this side to work on the suspension. So we're going to remove this, and if the mount's broken, we'll put in a new mount. If it's just the rubber bushings, we'll put in the rubber bushings. So for now, let's go ahead and 
start taking these shocks out of here. All right, we got our two nuts off the top there and we can now remove the bushing and the uh, top plate. Actually, I'm gonna push the shock through to get that before I get that bushing off. So let's go underneath and we'll uh, undo the two 10 millimeter bolts. And actually that shock uh, busted when we were undoing it. See the fluid right there that came out from it? That shock busted when it uh, spun a little bit. So anyway, we're putting brand new ones in there. Oh, what I was showing you is we gotta get these, uh, there's a 10 millimeter right there and there's one behind there and that gets the shock off. All right, so we're gonna put some pressure on the shock and actually pull it down so it comes through. Ah, man. Come on. There we go. So we got the shock out and now we can access that bolt here. And yeah, you can see that shock, the shaft actually busted when uh, we undid the nut and you can see all the fluid dripping out of it. So good thing we're replacing these old shocks. So I'm gonna take these nuts out now. All right. And there we go. There's that old nasty shock. There's our, there's our top bushing. And we wanna look under here, so this is good. Yeah, see how that, that came apart? It's actually screwed together and it came apart when we were unscrewing it from the top. But there's our bump stop. And this bump stop is in outstanding condition. We are definitely going to keep that bump stop and we're going to clean up the shock cover here in the parts washer and keep that. So those are really good. So those are really good parts there. So we're going to keep those and we're going to replace that nasty old shock. All right, like I said, ultimately to, uh, we're going to have to remove the spring on both sides of the car to do the suspension service. Um, but uh, in order to do that, you have to remove the air cleaner. So we're going to go ahead and, and do that now. Um, first part is you just take this accordion tube off here and that just literally compresses and spins out like that and then we take a uh, 10 millimeter here, but this is uh, from the valve cover and it just pops onto here so we can pop that guy off and we'll just spin it over like that and then we're going to take a 10 millimeter right there. We do that, and then you have to, of course, unclip everything. And always hate it, on the 126 chassis, this little firewall, like rubber uh, insulation pad, it's always in the way of that air cleaner clip. There we go. I hate that part. All right, so we're gonna pull this guy off of here. And we'll just put our screw back on there so we don't lose it. There's our air filter. So we'll take the air filter out. And that is a, that's a new air filter. That is super clean. Obviously, uh, and of course, you know, you guys saw the service records in the first video. The previous owner was definitely maintaining this vehicle. That's why it's in such good shape. But that's, I mean, that's a brand new air cleaner. Okay, now down inside here, you have a 10 millimeter there, right there, and right there. So we're going to undo those. Those are what hold the air cleaner rubber mounts. I 
see that's the one that's broken for sure. And that one is broken too. So that was the only one over here that I could undo. So now in order to get the air cleaner off, we need to, this is the uh, air tube that sends air into the turbo. And there is a bracket, a band clamp on there that you can loosen with a screwdriver. So we need to loosen that. And then we can pull everything off of here. There we go. Need to loosen it a little bit more. There we go. Oh, good. So our bracket, uh, air cleaner mounting bracket is intact. It is just, here you go. That is the rubber isolator. See, it's a rubber mount and part of it screws to the bracket and then part of it screws to the air cleaner. So we can see this one had, you know, that's kind of funky, but the other ones, see if you can see this, uh, actually ripped at the bottom. See, they're not attached anymore. That one and that one over here, they uh, ripped out of the bottom. So we gotta change those to get this uh, securely mounted. So we'll set this aside for now. And what's really cool, you don't see this often, is from the factory, the rubber mounts were in these little cups. See these little cups? And those are never on the cars, but they're still on this car, which is kind of cool. But we're gonna have to go underneath here and undo these bolts, uh, these nuts from the bottom in order to get those out. But now that that's out, see how much easier it is to access this area? So we'll go ahead and go back to what we we're working on, which is our shock. We need to get that undone. One thing I wanna point out before we start on the shock is look how clean that turbo is. That is super clean. Normally they're just covered with oil and grease in here. And uh, that is an incredibly clean, even the wastegate down here. Doesn't have a speck of oil on it. And here's the original, uh, that's the hose for the wastegate. And that hose is in outstanding condition. So just wanted to point that out. You don't, it's not often I get to see them in, in this clean and that nice condition. It's much easier to work on this side of the vehicle because you don't have all the junk in the way over here. And if we're lucky, we're not going to have to hold the shock piston still or the shock shaft still. We can just Get that nut off by shocking it with the impact. Oh, it's coming. Yes, we got it. It's so nice when that happens. Normally those are stuck on there and you have to put a screwdriver or something here to hold it still while it turns. So let's raise this up in the air and finish removing the shock from underneath. Move it out. Move it out that way so we can so we can get behind it. All right, there's our passenger side shock. And again, we want to check the bump stop um, because we would like to reuse those when they're in good. Oh, nice, perfect condition. So we're going to save that bump stop. And then replace this old original shock and of course clean up the shock cover. All right, there we go. Rotors, tie rod, center link, steering shock, our front shocks, and our rear shocks. Now what we can do is get in here. Whoop, sorry. Now what we can do is get in here and we're going to remove this spring and then undo the nut on the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint. Right there, we'll break that loose, and then we can remove this steering knuckle and get to the point where we can change the ball joint back here that has the busted boot. Also, we can remove the control rod bushing housing, 
which is held on by a bolt here and a bolt here. And we're going to remove the cross member, which we have three bolts here and on the other side. And see that goes across the car. And that will complete disassembly of the front suspension. So let's get started on that. All right, guys, now it's time to get the springs out of here. So this is a spring compressor for Mercedes and various other cars. But what you do, you take these discs and you slide them. Here you go. This one's already in here. You slide them into the spring like that. And then you drop the compressor in from the top. And you turn the screw and it cranks them together. All right. So here we drop our compressor down there. All right, guys. I didn't record this, but I ran the impact down on the compressor. Now you can see how the spring is compressed together. And it's no longer sitting down in the spring perch. So now I can loosen uh, the ball joint. Um, top and bottom and lower this control arm down and remove the spring so it's not dangerous actually all right now this guy they're sometimes hard to get out of there but you can wiggle them there we go and they start to back out all right here is the ABS sensor and we definitely want to clean this up um, so that ABS light does not uh, accidentally go off on the dash when it's not needed. All right, so these upper control arms on this car are in outstanding condition, and I don't want to break that boot. So what you do, you make sure you grease up the uh, removal tool really good, and then it'll slip in there and won't do any damage to the boot. we go we can get that there we go so now the goal was to move this out of the way so we can get our tool on there to break the bottom ball joint loose and see that spring it's not under uh it's not under tension so it didn't come flying out when we busted that top ball joint loose there we go all right and now we have the steering knuckle out and see that that ball joints loose and worn out see how loose it is and that boot is ripped so we're going to get that knocked out and replace it all right guys what we're doing now is removing the uh control rod bushing housing and cross member so first we want to get these bolts out of here These are the housing bolts. To get this housing out of here, we need to undo the control rod bolt here, pull that out, and then it can slip backwards and we can pull that housing out. And to do that, we need to fully remove uh, the spring uh, because we have to remove this spring perch so that bolt can actually come out. All right, guys, here's how we get that spring out. Uh, needs to clear this lip here, so we need to press down a little. There we go. And we have our compressed spring. Now, that's under tension. It's under load, but it's not going anywhere. We'll just lay it on the ground. And what that gives us access to is to remove the spring perch so we can clean it up and repaint it, just like we're going to do with everything. And then get this bolt out right here, which allow us to remove the control rod bushing housing.
All right, this is just a 13 millimeter. Spring perch, and we'll clean that up in the parts washer and repaint it. All right, guys, so what we see here. So first thing I wanna do is inspect these inner bushings. Those bushings are in perfect condition. I've actually made the mistake of removing those bushings based on mileage. And if I were to take that out and pull those bushings out, they would look brand new. Um, these bushings will go for a hundred, or these bushings will go 200,000 miles uh, if they're in good shape like this. See how stiff that is? There's no flex. Uh, so that is completely unnecessary and a waste of time to change those. Now, same goes for the bushings up here on the upper control arms. And this upper control arm is uh, fantastic condition. I've, I've also made the mistake of replacing these based on mileage and these can go a long time. So there's no need to pull this out and put in a part. These original Mercedes parts are very, very good quality. And you can see the bushings on the sway bar. Outstanding condition. We're just gonna replace the uh, control rod bushing, ball joint, all the steering linkage. All right, next thing we wanna do is remove that nut so we can slip this bolt out and remove the control rod. Sometimes you can get away with not putting a wrench on top. There we go, didn't spin. There we go. And now this entire housing can come out so we can change uh, this control rod bushing right here. Here is, these are bushings for the control rod housing. These are outstanding condition, it's rarely that you need rare that you need to replace those but they have a metal uh, like puck that goes in there pretty weird design I've only seen this on mercedes and then that bolt goes through and there's also a metal puck right there on the bottom so i'll just put that bolt back in so it stays in place and i don't lose it all right guys there is everything removed see where the housing was mounted right up here we now have it on the ground there. And there is all the front suspension components that we want to replace. So now it is time to take this over to the bench and get the ball joint out. And then we're gonna start uh, putting things back together. So in the meantime, what you guys aren't gonna see, I'm gonna go do all this to the other side of the car, get all that out of there. Anyway, see you in a minute. All right, before we can uh, press in the new ball joint um, and knock this old one out, we gotta remove the little steering arm here because it's in the way. And we will put those bolts back in there so we do not lose them. All right, guys, this removing ball joints Removing ball joints and control rod bushings are, are, are actually installing control rod bushings are a pretty brutal process. But to get a ball joint out, you literally take this slug here. And you got to tap it pretty damn hard. And you got to do it a few times and it'll pop out. See, it's already started moving. goes another whack or two and it will be out of there and there you go that's how you get a ball joint out so we're going to clean this up in the parts washer get all that old grease off of here we're going to repaint it the spindle and make it look nice and brand new again in the meantime we have to get out the old control rod bushing. And that is a few bolts in the back here and a chisel around the back and then you can usually tap them out of there. All right guys, I did this off camera, but 
there's a few bolts that go into here and hold this back cover on. You take those bolts out, remove the back cover, and this part gets replaced. This is like a rubber, uh, it's a rubber bushing that goes up against the back of the uh, control rod bushing. But then you got to get the control rod bushing out. All right, guys, this is the uh, housing from the other side of the car. Let's see if I can just record this here. And there you go. That's how you get one of these guys out. So now let's get our housings in the parts washer and get everything cleaned up. Guys, I'm just gonna get everything cleaned up in the parts washer before we start to paint and reassemble. Here's all the passenger side. Uh, suspension components and we've already cleaned it in the parts washer and uh, painted it and then cleared over it so it looks basically factory brand new we have the steering knuckle there's the new ball joint there is the control rod bushing housing there's the new control rod bushing here's uh the hardware all brand new hardware to mount the control rod bushing and the cross member uh, there is the cleaned up shock cover that goes over the shock, top of the shock along with the bump stop. Uh, here is the dust shield, the original you know Mercedes dust shield all cleaned up. And this is the spring perch. Oh, and that is the actual control rod. So that's the passenger side parts. And like I said, we're waiting on the shock and bearings and some other parts. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to go get started on... Uh, cleaning up the parts on the other side of the car. And uh, that'll be it for this video. So see you guys next time.